Hi clay people, Donna Cato here. This is a basic tutorial on the Skinner blend. Now you've, you've got to know the two-part Skinner blend. Uh, I have another tutorial about the Rainbow Skinner blend. And you know what, you should probably watch those uh, if you're not familiar with the technique. It is a foundational technique. So many things that you will see or want to do will involve the Skinner blend. So here are just a couple examples. This piece has a black to gold Skinner blend as a background. So it's easy to see how this would happen, all right? I could have used blue to pearl just as easily as I used the black to gold. This little ring here, not so little, the dark green to that nice lime green actually started out as a Skinner blend. This funny little pendant I made, you can see it grades from this blue to violet. This is from orange to yellow. And anywhere you see that kind of gradation, most likely whatever, uh, whatever it was, a cane, whatever, it started out as one of these sheets. So today I'm gonna do the very simplest things with these sheets. The first is going to be a Skinner Blend Bullseye. I'm going to roll from one color to another, but before I do, I'm just gonna show you a couple little things. So that perhaps you'll experiment a bit and not waste the sheet or not do something that you cannot take back. All right, so let's take this one piece and let's roll it up as it is. And it's thick. It's about setting number maybe one or two, but it's a thick sheet. And when you roll it up, thick like this, you can very clearly see the revolutions as the sheet is being rolled. So you can see that pretty clearly. Now, if you don't want to see it as clearly, you take the clay, you roll it through the pasta machine, and you thin it. So let me do that now. So I've rolled this through setting number six. You can see there's the pearl and there's the blue. So I just made it a lot longer. So let's start rolling up. I'm gonna cut the end. I have to apologize, I'm stuffed up. Um, I have a lot of allergies. Feels like spring is coming on and uh, that's kind of the my worst part of the year when I'm most affected. All right, so there you go. So you can kind of see the difference between them. Now, I would, after do, running this little sample, if I roll it this way, at this thin setting, I'm gonna cut off more of that pearl so that I don't end up with a dot of pearl in the middle. Well, let's just do that now. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the rest of this clay and I'm going to roll it through setting number six again. Once again, pearl, blue, so you can see I made it very long. All right, so let's cut off. 
some of the pearl so that I don't end up with that pearl center. The pearl center won't be as big. Let me say testing, cutting little bits off, pieces off and running tests is not a bad thing. In many cases, it will prevent you from wasting your work. So don't be afraid to run tests before you commit your clay to something that you cannot take back. Let's take a cut. And you can see the difference. All right, so that is our basic Skinner Blend Bullseye Cane. Now, sometimes you want a very short Skinner Blend. This is a bead that I made with a very short Skinner blend. But how do you get this and shrink it down to this? Well, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you right now. I'm gonna take the sheet and I'm going to thin it to about setting number three. Actually, four. This time, I'm not rolling from here, pearl to blue. I'm rolling the blend back on itself. So it's a long Skinner blend cylinder, unlike the bullseye when I rolled it up. The whole, uh, the whole cane appears just to be blue, right? There's no blend here. The blend occurs inside the roll. Okay, now we're going to compress this. So this is like reverse reduction. When you're reducing a cane, you're rolling and you're moving your hands out this way. Well, reverse reduction, we're going to roll, but we're going to pull our hands together like this. Okay. Every now and then, Grab it and push the ends in. Lay it back down on its side and continue to roll, bringing your hands together. You can see it's getting shorter and fatter. Every now and then I also just push in with my palms. Now the blue clay is a bit harder than the pearl. I can feel it, but I can also see that it is because as I'm rolling and pulling the clay in, I know that the pearl is responding faster. The pearl end is getting thicker than the blue. So if that happens, and sometimes it's more extreme than this, this is not bad. Stand it up and roll it like that while you're pressing, just roll like so. Then roll to smooth the sides and keep going. 
Sometimes it's helpful to grab, uh, excuse me, to grasp the ends and twist like I'm doing, twist and push, twist and push, twist and push. And you will move the clay faster. Okay. Now our Skinner blend is short, where it was quite wide, now it's very narrow. I have a full blend and a very short piece of clay. Now how do you use it? That's easy. You just cut some, like so. Flatten it a bit with your fingers. so that it's just a bit thicker than the thickest setting of the pasta machine. I'm gonna take this through the pasta machine. And as I roll it, I'm placing a blended edge on the rollers. You can imagine my finger is the rollers of my pasta machine. And now I have a very, very compressed Skinner blend sheet. This can be wrapped around a, uh, a rod of scrap clay to make a bead like this. Okay, now let's say that you've made a mistake. You've rolled it the wrong way. You wanted this, but you made a mistake and you rolled this. I'm including this because this happens in every single class. Every single one of my classes, this has happened. So I'm going to show you quickly how to take this and turn it back into this. Stand it up. Cut straight down. Rotate it. Cut again so that you have four wedges. Now each of these wedges with your fingers, flatten like this. Just flatten them. Second one, just flatten it. Each one of them. And as I said, this happens every time. And it's because it's quite easy to roll things the wrong way or roll in a direction that you don't mean to. And let me tell you, it happens to everyone, everyone. Now I want you to stack these up like so. like that. Now pinch and squeeze. Okay, now what I'm going to do 
is roll this through the pasta machine again. It's important. This edge, the blended edge, will go on the rollers. All right, we're gonna make this long this way. So make sure that you put the blended edge on the rollers. Now fold and roll as you did before. Blended edge on the rollers. So if any of you are teachers, file this away. And use it the next time one of your students happens to fold and roll the wrong way. Now, it's not exactly the same because remember I cut a lot of that pearl off, but your student or you will actually end up with a Skinner blend. that can be used as a sheet. can continue folding and rolling and it will get wide again. So that is the end of this uh, small basic tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a little something that might be useful in the future as you work uh, with your clay or if you teach, once again, just remember uh, this little trick of, of uh, taking a bullseye and turning it back into a Skinner blend sheet. So, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate that. And if you know of any beginners who, um, who need information, maybe they're starting, please point, send them my way. Because the goal of my whole YouTube site now is to help beginners and help people who might be a little confused about polymer clay. Clear some things up, make it a more enjoyable experience because, you know, we love our clay. Um, and armed with a little more information, I think that uh, it's even more enjoyable. Okay, so until we meet again, this is Donna, and thanks for watching. Bye.